Hey, everybody. I was going to say good. Uh, we're having to come up with a different way of saying good morning. So I've been saying like, um, <laughs> good day or good rise or good, good, happy, happy or good, happy. <laughs> so if it's morning for you, good, happy. Um <laughs> Uh, the way that we have to recreate the way, the way that we, we have to like just reform and recreate our language is going to be amazing to see how all that unfolds going forward. Right. Um, okay. So bah, 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 bah. there has been, I don't know about you guys, but I've been going through like even deeper levels of healing, even deeper even deeper, even deeper, even deeper. And I've cried so many times the last couple of days and it's been incredible. The epiphanies that are happening and that like, just when you thought you were healed, you know, and just when you thought, um, you know, it's like, it, I just love it when the universe just shows you a whole other piece or a dynamic and you're like, Oh, that again, that thing. Okay. Here we go again. You know? And I think that the, it is, absolutely of primary importance of utmost importance for all of us right now to not avoid the healing, to not avoid going to those deeper levels. In fact, I was sensing this morning that because I've been hearing all these reports about these divine feminines going to um, not their original divine masculine, but like an alternative version, like what I call like a soul flame. Um, and, and I was like, why is this happening? And I think, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of masculines have been kind of dropping, dropping the ball and not following through on their love, you know, um, sealing the deal, I guess. Uh, they stay hidden for a while. If you guys want to know more about that, you can go to my playlist, uh, talks, uh, about true love and, um, basically it just talks about how the divine masculine run from love and all that kind of stuff. Um, cause they're the more unhealed one. And so they're like really, really afraid to get hurt again. And they have to go all through all this stuff and they have to like, uh, get rid of their egoic ways and start to learn how to be authentic again. Like they were like, you know, going back to being more childlike, which I brought all this pink in to bring some more childlike energy and a little sparkle here. So, um, and some heartfelt pink energy uh, for any of you guys who knew me at, when I worked at the lighthouse. I was just cutting off my head. Um, for those of you who knew me who when I worked at the lighthouse, I just I had the most sparkly little setup ever. <laughs> it was like all pink and white and uh, flowers and just it was kind of like uh, over the top. But people felt loved when they came in and they were like, oh, you know. So um, I'm going to bring some more pink in here. So. Um, and to help heal our hearts and to help us to remember to be more playful. And I think that one of the issues with the divine masculines is, and they just put me through this myself, and that's how they show me things sometimes. Um, when the feeling of feeling unworthy of somebody being kind to you, that's, it's, it's a tragedy. It's a terrible tragedy. And unfortunately, almost all of it have, it, all of us have it because, We've all been mistreated terribly because of our culture and our society and our upbringing in the in this crazy system that we find ourselves in. <laughs> and so it, it's when somebody treats us really the way we should all be treating each other. Uh, it feels so foreign and we feel undeserving of it. And it's not like we think that we're a, like a, a less than person or anything like that. It's just like such a relief, I guess you feel really relieved. Wow. Like, cause you've wanted it your whole life. You've been in these relationships where they just, where you really wanted it so badly for them to love you like you wanted to. And then they would never give it to you and just kept reconfirming, you know, I'm not lovable or, or there is no love out there or whatever. Um, so when somebody actually turns their attention on you and is very loving and nurturing and kind and supportive and, and all those things that you've always wanted, you're just like, it, it, it's, uh, as wonderful and incredible of a blessing as it is, it's also overwhelming and you push it away and it's not a pushing away out of, um, 
I don't want it because you do want it really bad and you're just like starving for it. But it's it's kind of like, I guess when a skinny, scrawny dog living on the streets and never gets fed and gets abandoned and looked, 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 what do you call it? Just ignored <laughs> um, for a while. And then all of a sudden a steak is put in front of them or a big old pile of food or whatever. You'd see their eyes get big too. Like, oh, what? Like somebody being nice to me? What in the world? So um, if you're not accustomed to that, and if you haven't gotten used to, you know, having people around you who act like that, it can, it can be a shock to your system um, as wonderful as, as it is. And even good stress is still stress. You know, it's a, some good, wonderful things coming your way are, it can be very overwhelming as well. So um, it's a whole other level of healing to have to go through that. And even accepting receiving without like pushing it back by trying to give back, like, like, oh, you're giving me so much. Okay, let me give to you. Let me give to you. And it's good. It is good to create a balance, but just also to make sure that you're not um that you're that you're not going out of out of balance again. It's like allow yourself to receive, is what I'm saying. Allow yourself to receive. And I think what the masculines are missing is this whole piece about how masculines cannot cry. Now, this is males and females alike, because the masculines, it's not a gender thing. Um, but if 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 you in this culture. In this culture, it's like you're not allowed to cry. You know, it's like you're showing vulnerability and that's not okay. But with somebody who treats you like this, suddenly you, you're you willing to experiment with and see what happens if you open up. And if you can establish rapport and trust with this person, then you find yourself saying, "I like instead of some of the masculines who just they can't face their feelings and they can't even email or text, you know, sometimes if they can't, if they can't say it to your face, cause they're afraid they're going to cry, which is really, I think a lot of their fear, they're afraid they're going to cry and you're going to look at them different and you're not going to have any respect for them anymore or something, which is really silly, but it's, it's what we've been programmed to believe. Um, but we, it's not okay for us to cry. So then what we do is we write an email or we text or something like that, because, because we're feeling all this emotion and, and we want to push the person away, but we really don't, not really. So, um, that, that's what the masculine dance kind of is. It's like, they get really scared when they, when they get something so great and then they pull away. So, uh, we have this we have this thing going on right now where a lot of a lot of the feminines are reporting to me that they're going with, for their soul flames now. Uh, not all of them. Some of them are going with their original twin flames, but it's like I think that I think that it's the twin flames that are willing to be vulnerable that are making it in terms of the originals. Uh, and just a quick explanation of what I mean is twin flames are the ones who who were, were like the the initially ignited they were the thing that made you even think of the the concept of twin flames the very first person that you met that you saw all these signs and synchronicities and your love was so full and like oh my gosh you know and and then what happens is if that masculine is is too in his ego and too afraid they shut the door on their inheritance with you and when that happens, it's like they pass the torch to the next person most likely to love you. And that twin flame energy, I feel at this point in time, and I have yet to hear another concept that makes more sense, but basically the torch stays with the original twin flame, but the torch gets passed also onto what's called a soul flame. So it's like plan B, plan C, D, E, F, you know, and it keeps getting passed down to somebody who, who keeps, who will keep the flame lit. Um, and then you ultimately, you ultimately end up with hopefully the person who was able to keep that flame lit for, you know, in both your hearts. And, uh, but that takes vulnerability and it takes being willing to, to feel your emotions and not run away from, from, you know, face love. It's okay to be totally afraid of love and to be given to in that way, to have somebody love you that much. We get afraid to lose them. We get afraid something's going to happen to them. We get it. I mean, I haven't wanted to have children because I'm scared to death that I'll love them so much that I would just die if they get a hangnail, you know, <laughs> and it's like, I love too hard. I love way too hard. So I get attached, you know, and I get, I get like uh, protective and all of that. So 
Um, so I've avoided having children and things like that because of it, like, you know, having a past life where my kids were ripped to shreds in front of me, like kind of makes you have an aversion to having children. Um, (laughs) so, you know, I think that, I think that we're coming to a time when, when masculines are starting to realize this, that they need to just be okay to be vulnerable and they need to just break that whole code of, of silence, um, for other men. And that, that it's okay to, to just be themselves and to sparkle and shine if they want to, or, or try something new and different that others might judge and things like that. So, but that's, that's how you also come together with your true love is both people being their most authentic self, basically. Okay. So um, what was I going to say about, uh, let me look real quick. So give yourself, oh yeah. And how do you know if you're properly healed? Because we go through all, like I said, all these different aspects need healing right now. And we'll think we healed this one and we'll go, oh, that's why I do that. Oh my gosh. That makes so much sense. My mom did that. Or my mom made me do that because we'd always go la, 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 la. Oh, my dad caused this to happen and this and this and this. But to go deeper is to acknowledge that there was an innocence in those who supposedly did the thing to you, you know, they were programmed by society. They were even mind controlled. They were even, you know, I realize now that we've grown up in this culture, <clears throat> this tainted culture, um, it's created a ripple effect and it's affected all of us in some way, shape or form. And so we can see the innocence in our parents and we can see the innocence in, in all of it, or we can see that the, the people got duped and they fell for certain belief systems and programs and, and whatnot. So I think that that's going deeper is when we can, when we see, we have the revelations and, and you can be saying all the time, thank you God so much for all the incredible epiphanies and realizations that I'm having. And it'll bring more and more and more in. So it's more about that you become more self-aware as to why you do certain things. And then you be, become um, aware of, Uh, how innocent everybody is that's involved, but then you also go to another level of dropping the stories altogether and none of it actually needing to mean anything. So, um, you know, if you, you know that you're getting triggered, if you, if you cry or you feel like suppressing the anger or the upset or whatever, if there's like angst going on, a bunch of buzzing around going on in here, that needs some, some deeper healing. So uh, like, don't avoid it. Don't, don't go eat a bunch of stuff. Don't go, you know, running you know, necessarily, but just like sit and have a good cry by yourself if you have to, or with a trusted friend or something like that, but just get it out and really take a good look at it. Face your demons at this time. And, and if you can do Byron Katie's work, that's the best. That is absolutely the best I think one of the best ways that you can process that stuff. And that's why I also thank you, God, for my misery is exercise is so helpful too, because you're able to go through and radically accept every bad thing that's ever happened to you and see the good in it and see why your higher self put you through it, you know? Okay. So what else was I supposed to talk about? Oh, okay. So just a couple of reminders. Um. So for those of you who are in my world questions on Telegram, my world questions chat, I'm going to be doing a video probably today or tomorrow when you get, when you hear this and when you watch this. Um, So if you have a question about anything going on in the world right now, please post your question in the world questions chat, but let it be a closed ended question. So at the very end of my next awakening video, great awakening video, at the very end, I'm going to go through and just answer yes or no to all of your questions. So any questions that you have, um, you know, it can be a a, it doesn't have to be short. It can be a little bit longer, but end it with a yes or no, like, you know, close ended, if you guys know what that means. Phrase the question in such a way that I have to say yes or no to it. Cause I wanted to just go quick. I wanted to boom, 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 just fire off. And I may, and I may pull cards or not. I don't know. I'll have to see what that, what it feels like in the moment. So if you want a question, a world question answered in the next great awakening video, then ask it in the world questions group. Um, I suppose you can, 
It's harder for me to cut and paste it if you put it in the comments underneath this video, but I guess you could do that. But don't put it in the chat. Don't put it in the chat because then it's really going to get lost. Put it in the comments underneath the video or go into world questions. Or I suppose you could email me it would be fine too if you want to do that. I just don't want it coming from all these different directions. So it would be better if you guys could just do it through the world questions. That would be awesome. Okay. So the other thing is I've got the group mentoring now. If you go to amysatori.com and you click, click on services, then you go to mentoring. There's either group or private. I don't have any privates available right now, but I do have a group mentoring. Um, I have four spots left. So um, I need you guys to sign up before you've got um, a few days before June 30th to sign up. It could be a once in a lifetime thing. This may be the only time I'm ever doing a group mentoring thing. So if you guys want to participate in that, sign up by June 30th, and then we're going to figure out a mutually agreeable time that all of us can, can talk over Zoom and start in July sometime. So um, again, that's amysatori.com forward slash services. And if you want to get a private reading or anything like that, all the information is there for that as well. Okay. <clears throat> And for some reason, Mary Magdalene wants to say something to you guys today. So we're going to, I'm going to pull a card. Hmm. Oh yeah. So what was that? Oh, they're wanting to reiterate and remind that there's no way out, but in, there's no way out, but in. Okay. I mean, it is absolutely essential right now, you guys, to not avoid the healing and really go deep with it. Even if you think you're healed and even if you think you're, you know, if anything brings up emotion for you, be like a bloodhound and hunt it down and just be like, what is this? Okay. Illumination. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Okay, all right. Your creativity is blocked at present because you are not expressing how you truly feel. <laughs> hmm. To unblock your creativity, you need to express your feelings. Creativity is first and foremost about self-expression. Every piece of art, no matter what the subject or style, is a self-portrait. Express everything you feel inside, good, bad, beautiful, or ugly. Everything is valid. So don't place judgments or restrictions on yourself. Your creativity has no boundaries apart from the boundaries you place on it yourself. Oh, thank you. They're just reminding me of something I was going to talk about too real quick. So creativity is the essence of your life and the self-expression is creativity's voice. Self-expression heals and liberates you. It illuminates your mind and heart. All you need is to let your feelings come through. So be be willing to dive deep into those feelings, you guys. And, you know, if, if you can't forgive yourself, if you're so angry for something you've done, that's coming up for the masculines right now too. Just put your hand on your heart. I love you even when you screw up. I love you even when you make a really bad decision. I love you even when you betray the person you love most. I love you even when you keep making the wrong decisions. I love you even when you screw up on this or you screw up on that or whatever you're beating yourself up for. Hand on heart, okay? Just keep coming back to this and just saying, I love you. I love you no matter what. It's okay because when you can love yourself that way and give yourself that love, you're going to be able to love your partner that way too. And, you, and it, can, it does not go the other way around. You cannot, it's, it's impossible for you to love somebody properly if you don't start here, okay? So um, the other thing they wanted to talk about um, is godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. So, you know, they talk about this in the Bible. Some of the things in the Bible are actually true <laughs> and relevant. <laughs> A lot of it not, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to go into that, but worldly sorrow versus godly sorrow. Okay, so worldly sorrow is when you make it your, you, you become a victim. 
Oh, I've done these terrible things. I'll never be able to forgive myself. I can never make right by this person. I would have to climb every mountain and swim every stream to win their love back. It's impossible. I can never. And it's like they become like a total martyr um, or, you know, your illness or whatever. It's like you become a victim of it, of whatever the circumstance is. Godly sorrow is taking a look at it and doing the examining that I'm talking about, doing the deeper healing on it, figuring out, um, okay, so, so what, what, what made me do that? What is it that made me, and being loving with yourself, like just exploring. Byron Katie is a great process for taking you through that healing process of, of making you aware of why and all that stuff. You don't have to hash it out with a counselor, guys. That's, it's way too painful, way too in, ineffective to go to a counselor. I think, in my opinion, I would never go to a counselor. I did, that would just be like, no. It, would, it takes way too long. It costs way too much money. Byron Katie is like a 10, 10 or $11 book. And you, all you got to do is read it and learn how to do the exercise or just learn it from watching my video on it here on YouTube. And it's free and way more powerful and way more effective. And you don't have to hash this hash out your past and like dissect everything that's ever happened to you in your life. All that does is just keep bringing it up and reiterating it, pounding it into your head. And it just makes it more and more permanent. This is my story and it builds and gets deeper. And then once I was done with that layer, there's a bigger layer and it's just, it can get ridiculous. So what you really want to do is work on your stressful thoughts that you have at current right now, what stressful thought am I having? And you take a look and you just examine it as to whether it's even true. So as you do this with everything in your life, you just start letting, letting go of the ego and every choice that you make, you're either going to choose ego or love and ego, as we know, is artificial intelligence that's been effing with us for like a million of years or forever. <laughs> So once you understand that, it's like, okay, so am I, am I grasping onto something with the ego or am I choosing love? So if you feel yourself, Ooh, I can't do that because it would take this from me or whatever, whatever just like drop the ego part and you will feel whoop, this love part's going to shoot up through the, through the, through the sky and like lift your vibration, make you feel like, I mean, it'll be scary to let go of whatever you're clinging to over here. But once you let go of whatever you're, uh, boom. So godly sorrow creates transformation, self-awareness, compassion, kindness. It softens you. It opens your heart. It makes you more wise. Uh, it makes you more faithful. It makes you like, and, and not because you're shaming yourself. It's not about shaming yourself, which worldly sorrow would be about shaming yourself. It's about learning and healing and growing and loving and becoming more and more of that Christ consciousness all the time. So, you know, you can just choose, like I said, choose, choose your ego. Your either your ego wins to give you reassurances that you think you need um, in this material world or whatever. And then you, or you choose love and you say, you know what, this you know, this is the loving thing to do, or maybe there's a compromise or something like that, that, you know, so just figure that what, what that'll mean something different for everybody watching this right now. So you can, you can see how that applies to you. Okay. Is this thing going? Yeah, it is. Okay. Now I'm thirsty. <laughs> um, and remember to take baths get massages, you know, do whatever. I, I have a massager. I went to bed with the massager the other night and I just did like my, I did a full body massage on myself. It felt wonderful. So, you know, don't do that to pamper yourself in some ways too. Ugh. Okay. So order 4084. Hang on a minute. What? Okay. There's a new, they want, they want you to know that there's a new process for emergency readings. The way those work real quick is if you, if, if I have time and only during the week, I'm trying to shut those off for the weekend. Sometimes I forget, but if you could remember, that'd be helpful. <laughs> 
I will only do them during the week. And as I have time, like as I have, like if I, if I feel like I could squeeze somebody in for 10 minutes, I'll open up a spot or open up a slot. So what I'll just mark my quantity to one or two or whatever I think I could do in that week. And I'll just, I'll just put those in there. And then if you guys see that the slots open and it's not marked as sold out, then you're like, Oh, cool. I could get that. And then I give you better instructions now as to what to do and how best to get my attention to let me know, you know, and to arrange our talking for 10 minutes. And the 10 minutes um, can be super, super powerful and effective. So don't, so don't worry about the time. I'm very efficient. Um, Also, but please also respect my time and keep it to the 10 minutes. So what I do to kind of discourage, you know, taking advantage of it is if you go over 10 minutes, I don't give you a recording. So that that's like your little slap on the hand for going over the 10 minutes. <laughs> and you'll see that in there. Um, if it says sold out, it just means that uh, either I forgot to put quantity in there or I'm just too busy or, but, but either way, um, I, and I only do emergency readings, by the way, for people who've gotten readings from me before. You have to have my phone number through having made or placed an order, in other words. So to do that, and that's like an, that's like a new thing. So nobody new can do it. Only people who've ordered from me before are able to do it. Um, okay, so anyway, if it's sold out, just text me because you have my phone number from a prior order. It's in the order confirmation, okay? So text me and just say, um, I have an emergency right now. Could you please open up a spot? And I would do that for you. Okay. So even if it says sold out, I, I will still do an emergency reading for you if you really, really need it. And if you're in a really stressed out situation, for sure. Okay. All right. So now for real, four, 4084. Okay. Um, <laughs> good morning, Amy. Um you have helped me so much. Thank you. I have four questions for you. Number one, uh, I got to get rid of the one in back of this because I'm reading two things at the same time. Okay. Um, I was, at I was attacked by two men when I was little while walking in the woods. I was attacked by two men when I was little while walking in the woods. That's terrible. I was able to get away from them, but I cannot remember how I got home. Did angels help me get home? Wow. Yeah, I just saw the word protected. You were protected. I see a woman actually. Um, I see, oh, is it was the was the woman an angel? I got a yes. Did the angel escort her home? Yeah, you were dazed. You were you ran and um feels like yeah, you you had good instincts. You had really good instincts. You felt like it was foul play for sure, right? Right off the bat. Um, yeah, you did a good job getting away. Um, and was it um, fairies? I feel like uh, I feel like a fairy was whispering in your ear which way to go. So you know, we don't realize how helped we are until you know, like like the a time like this where you're just like, how did I even get out of that situation? I don't even remember. It's because the the subtle world was whispering in your ear. And back then you weren't even aware of it. You know, you had no idea you were being helped um, like that. So, so it was an angel. It was an angel. It was a fairy and an angel. <laughs> it feels like the, the angel appeared as a woman. So it could have been like, it looked like a neighbor or somebody driving by. Um, but it feels like there was a woman involved with brown hair, long brown hair, and she, I don't know if she waved to you or asked if you were okay or something like that, but whoever that was, that was an angel. But the fairy was whispering in your ear the whole time, which way to go and which way to turn. Um, and I feel like, thank God they didn't follow you home is what I felt. But you're too much of a fighter. They don't like the fighters. You know, they like to go after those who will, who will submit and surrender. So, wow. Um, I mean, this is a, this is a good reminder, I guess, in this, in this day and age and what we're going through, train your children, you know, to stay away, to stay away from anybody who seems at all suspicious and do not give them the benefit of the doubt as a child, like get, get run to a trustworthy feeling adult. 
So maybe that you can even like take your kid out to a park and point out different people and say, what do you feel about that one? What do you sense about that one? Could you trust that person? Could you go up and ask if, you know, for help from that person, you know, and don't go by how they look, but go by what you sense and what you feel, you know, train your kids to listen to their intuition. It could save their lives. Um, as well as, de- as you know, deepening, deepening your own connection with, with God source. Okay. So number two, David Wilcox said he um, he's remembering being taken and remembering sexual abuse. Ever since I watched him, I've been dreaming about twelve year uh, about twelve year old and unders being hurt, like I was made to watch. I cannot describe here what I saw. Did this happen to me too? I got a yes. So. I wanted to do a blessing on this because I think a lot of us without realizing that we've, we've been in similar situations and we'd completely like tuned it out. Um, some of us have blocked out our, our childhood completely. We'd like, we don't remember anything <laughs> like, we're, you know, maybe two or three memories. And it's like, well, what happened back then that, that I completely blocked out. Right. Um, and I think that that's protection for us that we weren't supposed to remember that stuff or we were zapped by something that wiped out our memories, something like that, you know, but there, I mean, there's all kinds of trippy things coming out that we're going to find out uh, going forward. But yeah, I want to do, yeah, it did happen to you. It absolutely happened to you. And I think, like I said, so, so many of us, all like probably maybe even all of us at some point in a past life, have been made to watch something horrific like that. Like me having my kids mutilated in front of me. I will, uh, I, I've never cried so hard, hard in my life. Uh, recollecting, um, remembering that past life was horrible, absolutely horrible. So, um, but now I can look at it with compassion. And now that I know the whole thing about the Luciferians and all that stuff, now it makes sense. You know, at least it makes sense because before I was like, what kind of horrible human beings would do that to children? Like, you know, now I know that they weren't human beings, so they didn't give a crap. In fact, they they ate off of the the energy, the horrifying energy. So, you know, it makes it makes sense. (laughs) It wasn't good, but it still makes sense. It clicks now. Whereas when I first found out about this, I just I just thought people are horrible. How could people do like human beings do that? So anyway, um, and that's something that some people are actually come going to come to the realization about themselves too, as they find out things that are going on in our world right now, they're going to be like, Oh my God, that makes sense. Doesn't it though? It's like the truth always makes sense. And it kind of unravels other things for you. Oh, well, that's why that happened. And okay. You know, it's like, we're putting the pieces together. So let's do this blessing for, for all of us who've had to, you know, witness those things in past life, current life, whenever or however we've ever had to witness anything that we really would rather have not seen. Um, anytime when we have been kind of suctioned off of by those vampires who were trying to steal our energy, steal our negative energy to feed off of any of that stuff, we're going to like, we're going to neutralize all that energy right now. Okay. All right. So I want you to just relax, drop your shoulders. <laughs> I'm giving everybody their power back also, like enabling them to all rise up instead of just be traumatized and paralyzed, like to take action against those who were attacking them, those who were like in charge at the time. Um, Leaders are being taken down like the the they just said the devilish leaders are being taken down. So 
now is the time for rising up and not only stay, um, staking our claim on our sovereignty, um, but also, you know, letting letting those who are in charge who are brainwashed know what's truly going on um, behind all of it. And so we have to educate the the lead the leaders underneath the leaders that are evil. <laughs> you know, those who've been trained in the evil system without knowing. They need to get educated at this time and we need to take our power, power back. And even I see like massive arrests, like citizens arrests and things like that. So it's going to be really exciting to see some of this stuff finally start to happen. And it's going to build momentum, I feel. So any of you who feel terrible that you didn't take action in the past and you just let it happen and you just sat there and watched and you beat yourself up over it, you guys are going to be kicking some serious ass going forward. You guys are going to become like warriors and you're going to get superpowers. I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but just go listen to Ismail Perez. He's, he just gives further confirmation that we're all like coming into this time when we're just going to be like a telekine- we're going to be able to do telekinesis, move things with our minds. Um, we're going to be able to, well, consciously switch timelines. We're going to be masters of our vibration, masters of manifesting, healers, all of that, all of it. And fly. We can fly. We can dive into the water and swim for a while. I mean, all, all these things we're going to be able to do. So it's going to be amazing. They just said extraordinary, Ex- extraordinary, right? Okay. Um, number three, I'm dreaming three or four times a week that I am out walking in the dark and I am lost. I'm terrified because I cannot find my way home. I feel like I'm being watched. Why do I keep dreaming this? Okay. So when we have the, these repeated dreams, it's because um, we're supposed to see something that we're not seeing that we're kind of suppressing or, or shoving down. And so for the, for some of you who have already heard this story about a million times, I am so sorry, but repetition does help. <laughs> For those of you who haven't heard it, it's pretty cute. But um, I used to have a dream like that. They came to me like several, several days a week. And, and when you're, when you're so afraid, like it's afraid, it's scary to you, but may not be scary to other people, you know, but um, I lived in a house that I often felt very alone in. And I was, so I would be in my house that I grew up in and there would be uh like a dinosaur would start coming down the street before Jurassic park. Um, I would hear footsteps and, and I would look down the street and see that the like puddles shake because it was a rainy place. So I'd see the puddles shake with each step of the, of the dinosaurs. And I would be just frightened with every step. Boom, boom, boom. It would get closer. And then it would get to my house and then it would look in the windows, these huge eyeballs with red, you know, it, lo- it would look in and be all fierce. And it would, every window would go all around the house and it like knew I was in there. And so I would have to hide and, and, be, and be all scared and hope that it didn't see me or hope that it wasn't going to do something or whatever. But eventually I got sick of the dream. I got so sick of the dream. I thought I need to do something different. So I stood my ground. I stood up in my bedroom and I crossed my arm, you know, I put my hands on my hips like this and I was waiting for him to put his little eyeball in the window. And he sure enough, he did. He looked right at me and my heart was like, and I just was like, what do you want? You know? And, and he just, he looked kind of like taken back. And then he was all excited. He goes, I just want to play. It's like, what? <laughs> so I think that, you know, you know, spirit's sending you some kind of a message here. So let me, let me feel into this. And, and the dream never came to me again. So you're, you're facing a fear right now. Okay. So wait, they're pointing me to a part of the dream for a minute here. Let me take a look at this. Cannot find your way home. I feel like I'm being watched. I feel like I'm being watched. Um, I feel like it, it is actually interesting. It feels like you are somehow subconsciously aware that there's dream warfare being aimed at you. 
And I think sometimes when we're involved with dream warfare, when somebody's um, throwing dark energy at you while you're sleeping, sometimes, sometimes you'll get tested to see how you react to certain things in your sleep so that they know what your weaknesses are and, th- and stuff like that. It's really weird. It's got to be like negative artificial intelligence. I get a yes. So they're testing you. So even when you go to sleep, like think like a warrior, like whatever happens tonight, I'm going to be a badass. You know, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to be a badass. And I've had a lot of dreams where like, I've had like demons coming after me and witches and like anything you can imagine has come after me through the years. And, um, so it feels like you were somehow you are, or were somehow subconsciously aware of, 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 they just said the a web of deceit that is in your dream state. So, um, somehow you narr- you got away to some um I, like a between two web worlds or something this is so trippy you're it, like the reason that you're feeling lost is because you escaped some kind of a matrix over here but you're not quite in the matrix that's over here some of you gamers and stuff might might even understand the terminology of this but you're like in you are in a, like a lost space in the dream world so um, I feel that, and there is, there is some AI watching to see what you do. So, um, now I would study lucid dreaming and that's spelled L U C I D study lucid dreaming and figure out, set your intention to do some lucid dreaming in your dreams. This will make you aware. At least you'll be aware that you're, that you're dreaming And you'll be able to think better. You'll be able to to be like, whoa, okay, I'm lost. I'm in the dark. Oh, yeah, this is that dream that I keep having. Okay. And and you'll be able to like critically think your way out of the situation or navigate the which way through because I feel like you're going to be led to um, a light in the other matrix um, that's like there. You'll see almost like a little door opening and you're going to go through that door. Um, they said lightheartedness is the key to not be afraid, but be lighthearted. So w- one of the things that I found through all these different dreams of being attacked by all these different creatures is, is across the board. There's one thing that, that uh, annihilates all of the confusion, that it brings truth to everything. It takes the veil off of everything. It lifts the sheets off of everything. So you can see the Oz. I mean, it is the go-to if you want to, if you want to d- dispel any kind of a nightmare is you laugh your ass off, laugh and laugh hard. So if you find yourself lost and being watched again, crack up about it. Think of how funny it is. Think and Or don't even do that. Just laugh. Just laugh for the sake of laughing as a weapon even. And it'll work. It'll work. It'll get you out of there. It'll get you. So laugh at, at anyone who has to waste their time watching you try to get out of a trap. I mean, how boring is that? It is laughable. You know, am I that interesting? Did you have to see if I can get out of a trap? Like, how bored are you? <laughs> you know, and so go, go to bed with the intention of lucid dreaming and, and watch some kind of, you know, watch a video on how to do that or read a book on how to, on how to set the intention to do that or just set the intention. There is, um, there is a product that you can take to help you lucid dream. And I think it's called like guantanamine. There's something like that. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, guantanamine. I'm going to look it up real quick to just see if that's the, you know, how to spell it. If I again, gua, it put in Gus. <laughs> gua, hmm. oh, here we go. Oh, shit. Sorry. Guantanamine and guantanamine anyway okay what i'm what i'm seeing in my mind is um g u a n t a m i n e actually let me try to spell that in here guantanamine it's bringing up glucosamine chondritin Anyway, you could even put in a search for, um, or, you know, somebody will probably put it in the comments beneath this video. 
because it's it's put away. I don't have it out right now. So I can't even check the spelling, like go grab it for you, but it, it does help you lucid dream. So, and there's a way to take it too. Like, I mean, I don't know. I do different than the instructions say that I think the instructions say go to bed for a couple of hours. And sometime when you take a pee, pee break, then take it and then go back to sleep again. And you'll have the lucid dream. That doesn't work for me. For some reason, when I just take it, when I go to bed, it, it start it puts me right in lucid dreaming or gives me a really, really good dream. Some kind of really vivid, cool dream. So, um, yeah, Hama Natai Kane Sasei in I. Okay, so you're you're gonna figure it out, and so those are some really good tools and something to look for is that door that's gonna be lit up. Um, I mean, I'm seeing total darkness, but then there's a there's a little um, there's a little door open where you can see the light coming through. So just go toward go toward the light. Okay, four zero eight five. Hi, Amy. Bless you for helping all humanity. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I've been seeing lots of sixes and I'm feeling really nervous about what it means. Plus, my family's going through a weird separation. What does the universe want me to know? Thank you. Love you so much. Okay. Um, so all the, what's up with all the sixes and the separation, God? Okay, um, they're saying that six is actually a sacred number. So if I were you, I would look up sacred uh, sacred geometry and look up what a six means. Or you can also go to Joanne's Sacred Scribes and put in 666 and see what comes up. Um, don't, you know, any pr pretty much anything in this world that they warn you about, they say is evil, is actually good and beneficial for you. And anything that's good and beneficial for you that they tell you is, is probably really horrible for you. So, and a lot of you know that if you're watching my channel. So, um, 666, um, it, it feels like it's actually a powerful number and sixes are about, um, they can be about lovers. They can be about making a major decision. And um, it can be about passion. It can be, uh, I just saw a snail. I, I don't know why that jumped in my head. It could mean something about a snail. Um, so you may want to look up what snail means. Um, time out. You've been so busy taking care of everyone else's needs, but need to uh, take care of yourself. So um, I feel like you know, the thing is when you, when you use scrying with everything in life, everything becomes some kind of a code. So you make of it what you want. It's never being done to you. It's something that you, the universe and spirit is trying to cr uh, create a code with you that you will understand. And so you guys can communicate. It's never to threaten you or to freak you out or anything like that. Some people get 111s and 333s and 555s and like all the numbers are, are good. There are no bad numbers. There is no bad anything unless you think it is. And if you believe it is, then you'll create it in your life because we're manifesting what we think and what we believe and what we say and all of that. So be really aware of the definition that you're putting on things and you can change that definition. Even if you feel tortured or tormented by this number six, all you got to do is put new meaning on it. Okay, sixes need uh, are telling me that I need to take a time out or make a major decision, something I've been sitting on and not making a decision about, right? So you do some research on those things that I just gave you, those three things that I just gave you and redefine it um, and make it something positive. Now we can do this with every single thing in our lives. Anything that you deem as a bad thing, turn it around to being a positive thing or affirm it as a positive thing or affirm the opposite if you need to, too. Thank you, God, that I now see new numbers. <laughs> you know, thank you, God, that the number six now means something wonderful for me. Thank you, God, that I don't um, that I see all these incredible signs and synchronicities always pointing me in the right direction and giving me the guidance that I need you know, whatever you want it to be, affirm it as if it's already happened. Um, okay, so let me feel into the situation with your family's separation and whatnot. Is this related to the sixes at all? It is. Um, but they're saying, choose love. They're saying whatever their situation is, and they need to keep coming back to choosing love. <clears throat> they're showing me the figure six, like like coming coming back around and you'll get stuck here until you choose love and then you can make your, your way back out. So um, 
what I feel that they're being told is to keep choosing love. So go back to the beginning of this video and where I talk about making the choice between love or ego and, um, and they need to be seeing, they'll see things more clearly if they can keep coming from a place of love instead of fear and trying to protect themselves and having their walls up. Um, so everybody, everybody who's seeing the sixes, you guys, you guys need to drop your guard, stop protecting yourself, be vulnerable, um, and heal basically, and keep coming to deciding from a place of love. And that's really the only warning there is to it. Um, I'm going to pick a couple of spirit cards. No one else can make you feel or do anything. You either buy into their story, story or you don't. If their story makes you feel bad, just choose a better story and take your power back. So you create the meaning for things in your life, not anybody else or anything else. Your objective right now is to continue your healing work <laughs> as everything else is being worked out behind the scenes. Just focus on you and mind your own business and you just focus on your healing. If you had any idea how protected you really are, you wouldn't spend another wasted moment on worry. How's that? You, uh, we are talking to you through what you hear, taste, touch, feel, smell, sounds, colors, and numbers. Please pay attention. Love yourself no matter what anyone else thinks. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Be true to you and be proud of yourself. So hope that helps. Okay. 4086. 4086. I've been dating someone for a few months. It happened fast and I have feelings that I haven't felt in a long time. It didn't take long for us to talk about being in love and we were seeing each other as often as possible. We're very busy in our own lives and texting constantly in between. A few weeks ago, something changed. He's distanced to himself and I don't know why. When we see each other, it's still magical, but it's few and far between and messaging in between has dropped considerably and with less flirtation and excitement. I'm wanting to know what to do. I want to be with him, but I really can tell, uh, can't tell what he's thinking or feeling. Okay. So let's take a look at, let me feel into him first and then we'll get confirmation with the tarot cards. He panicked. I feel like he panicked. Um, he, he felt like he, he got too, too close, too fast. And he, I think he saw, saw a part of himself that he's never seen before. Kind of like you just said, you just said that there were things you felt that you've never felt before. Uh, he's going through the same thing, only he doesn't know how to handle the, uh, the emotions. He doesn't know how to deal with that. He's never, you know, um, it's that thing about, you know, males not knowing what to do with their feelings. So they run rather than just tell you, I feel really vulnerable right now because I've never acted like this before. And I don't know what to do with it. You know, that's what would be the good, honest thing for them to do is to just, you know, uh, just move through it by communicating, you know, and you can pull back, you know, if you're him, he could pull back and just be like, this has been a lot for me to take in. And um, I'm just feeling some, I'm feeling emotional about it and I'm feeling scared. Um, but I, I, I would like to keep communicating with you to, to, to I don't want to lose it. I just have to like um, sort through some, some thoughts I'm having on it. And I need to do apparently some healing or something so that I, so I can come back more solid for you. You know, there needs to be some, some communication between you guys. So let's, uh, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh. He's trying to get up courage to have this new beginning and he wants to go slow because he, he, he wants to make sure that he doesn't slip up is what he just said. He, he wants to go like one step at a time and just be like every step is really solid. He takes one step and he knows he's going forward in the right direction. And then he takes another step and he knows that that's the right direction. Like every, he wants to make sure that every step that he takes is, is good. It's sure footed. He's not going to slip or anything with you. Um, He's also facing feeling worthy. Um, 
he want, he's trying to get up the courage to cause a commitment to happen with you because he feels like you're really grounded and mature and you love nature. And it's almost like you're like, um, what is it? Snow white that talks to the birds and all that stuff. It's like, you're very loving and, and one with nature. And he thinks about you all the time and the kind of rapport you guys have. And he's just so moved by it. So he feels a lot of passion for you. Um, and he sees a lot of opportunity for some stability with you too, but he also wants to, to meet your level of um, uh, maybe financial, financial compensation too. So perhaps he doesn't get paid as much as you do. Um, and I feel like, uh, he's, he's like, uh, almost like he's got to catch up to where you are. And if it's not money, then it could be just your flow, your abundant, um, mindset. So I still see him like going on a, on a, on a bike that doesn't, doesn't move anywhere, but makes you sweat, you know, those <laughs> exercise bikes or whatever. So he's like, going, da, 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 da. I need to catch up with her, but I'm not getting anywhere. Um, so he actually wants to gain traction with you. Um, I feel like pulling some masculine cards with that. Okay. Ooh, I'm open to or planning on relocating to be closer to you. Awesome. I'm open to compromise, compromising more than you may realize. Let's think outside the box and figure out a way you're that important to me. So he might be thinking of moving in, going to the next level. I'm making plans for us behind the scenes. I don't want you to know about just yet. Hmm. I'm setting us up for a bright, stable future and want to impress you the next time we talk. So he could be also just putting, putting some plans together. Maybe he's going to get a new job or something. You know, I'm not talking to you because I tend to sabotage myself and I don't want to hurt you. I'm working on healing, believing, and becoming more confident in myself so I can open up to this caliber of love. Okay, please don't, please stop doubting our connection. I can sense it and it's making me doubt too. Just have faith and know I'll reach out to you when divine timing dictates and no sooner. Trust me and trust life more. Okay. Nothing's gone wrong. It's going to, it's going to work out. It's going forward. Both of you have feelings for each other that are a little bit overwhelming. Like I talked about, there's no coincidence why I talk about the things I do in the beginning of these videos. <laughs> Oh, so you're good. You're all good. Don't worry about it. Just let him let him um, come to you when he is feeling more confident in himself, I guess. Did I just? Okay. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong one. All right. Um, okay. 4087. Hi, Amy. I hope you're doing well. I work with families and in talking to one of them, the mom related to me that my, that their dog started having seizures a while ago and it's on meds, but he is now aggressive toward her, even though she has always been the main caretaker. I told her about you and she gave me permission to ask about him. Can you tap into him and find out what's going on? Yeah. Um she hit Pama and I take in, so I just asked if it if it's the meds that are making him aggressive and I got a yes. I feel like his he was already fragile, his body was already fragile, and the meds like took him over the edge. Kind of like when you're already, it's like our world has already made everybody really sensitive right now with all the crazy happenings. Um, so we're all at a, uh, at a kind of a, a shaky kind of on shaky ground, but then you add more stress on top of it and it can make you snap at people. If you're not, if you're not actively healing yourself, it'll make you snap at people and, you know, it's, and that's your indicator to, Oh, well, okay. Time to go within again. I got to heal something here. Um, so I feel like, Shane, um, yeah, they said that I can, they said I can, I can help him balance out that energy. Um, yeah. And then there was something about, did he, okay. All right. Yeah. I guess that's it. How about Shishi Nataike? Hit Poma on I. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is try to get out all the toxins of the meds out of him. 
organic. I just got organic. So it'd be better if you can find like an organic veterinarian or somebody who is uh, more holistic that can give him um, more natural remedies. Um, Cause meds are really toxic, really, really toxic. All meds. How much is she not taking? So say not high. There's a company and I forget the name of them, but there's a company that makes silver for pets. I don't know if it's any different than the ones for, than the silver for humans, but it's like immune. It's made, it's a, it's an immune, immune care for pets that I feel would be really beneficial. Um, and salmon oil would be good for him because it feels like he has some, it's hard to explain, but he has sticky parts in him where the, if he had more oil and more of the, more of the salmon oil, it would make things more fluid and he could think more cognitively. They said he could think things through a little bit better. Um, so he needs lubrication in his system. So I would give him some salmon oil and whatever I just said before that. (laughs) When I'm channeling, it's like, I don't even remember what I say in these videos. It's so funny. Uh, I have my friends that are like, don't you remember what you said last week in such and such? I'm like, no, I have no clue. And then they'll remind me. I'm like, I said that. <laughs> so, um, I'm a shishi na taikehe la na san se shi he pom poma a ha na ake. Ha la san se shi ki te na ai he pim pupoma on. Tatai san seliki na hai tatan ha pa maha o na taish shishi in ha aike. Ho pa maha na tain sa si chihi la hai tante. I told him that when he feels that way that he can that he can run around to get his energy out, get playful, maybe just run outside or ask to be let outside instead of taking it out on you, like or just may, maybe regularly schedule in some running. So that he, uh, he, so he can burn off that energy. Um, I also feel kind of a pinched nerve in his, in his back. Um, you may take him, take him to a, um, a chiropractor. I think he needs an adjustment. It's in, in the middle of his back toward the back, toward, toward his hips, like above his hips. Uh, and I, I would get a, a pet deck. I would buy one of my pet decks. Um, if you go to amysatori.com forward slash store, or just click on the word store on my website, it'll, it'll, it'll bring up a bunch of Oracle cards I've made. And I would just do, I would do the pet cards because it feels like he's not feeling totally supported or understood by, by his owner. Um, so, uh, and it can get, all of it can get better. Um, can you get off of meds? Yeah, you can get off of meds even. So, uh, yeah, these are the, this is the pet deck here. I miss my old friend and I feel a bit depressed. I wish I had a hobby or interest to distract me from the sadness. Do you love me? I'm scared of something that's outside, but it's coming too close to our home for my comfort. Sometimes they make up stories in their heads about animals, like wild animals being able to get in their house and stuff. So you might have to just reassure him that those animals that walk by or even other animals or cats or whatever, uh, you know, let them know that they can't come in without permission. Who's in charge, you or me? I need to, I need you to be the leader or I start feeling insecure. Um, I want to go more places with you. Maybe that is his love language. Like when you take him places, that makes him feel loved. I know it's been a rough go, but I appreciate your efforts and care. And on the very back, I'm ready to move on. It's okay. So I don't know if, if, if she's been thinking of getting rid of him or something like that, but I think he's, I think he would understand if she wants to pass him off to someone else or put him down or something like that. Animals don't, don't look at death the same way we do. Um, to them, it's just like, oh, I'm just going to drop this body and go into another one or, you know, whatever. They're a good example to us of how to not be so intimidated by death. 
But at the same time, I feel like speaking on his behalf, like, I don't think that's going to be necessary. I, I don't think it is. If you get the pet deck and you get a naturopath and a veterinary or a, a chiropractor, you know, and some things going and get the Sam, just listen to all this advice. I feel like you're, you're going to see a positive effect and you might feel confident enough to take them off the meds. Can we go back to a place you've brought me before? I really miss it. So you will understand what that means. Okay. Or so just have a good think about that, what that could be. Um, all right. Um, 4088. Can you please do a quick healing on my Chihuahua? Yeah. Um, she feels stiff. Um, I don't know what that would be, except the only thing I can think of is like arthritis or something like that. She just like totally stiff. Wow, she's so tight. She she not to gains fear. She has too much fear that's keeping her like paralyzed. She needs some desensitization. I would read some more like positive reinforcement books. She needs to learn how to self-soothe. So maybe you're babying or spoiling her. She needs to like develop um, the ability to uh, help herself calm down. So you're, you're not the one who makes everything better. She can actually like, um, uh, I know a cat that kind of like when it gets stressed out, it kind of gags and it can't eat its food. It just, it, it, it. Um, but she has, has learned to, like calm herself down and kind of breathe and center when she's upset so that she can eat. So, and the, so they can learn that ability, just like a person can learn things They they can, they're like, especially it's something they have to get used to that's on a regular occurring on a regular basis. They initially had a, a problem with, they can kind of, you know, settle the, themselves down and kind of resign themselves to be like, okay, so this is a regular thing now. I need to be able to eat. So I'm going to breathe through this and, you know, that kind of thing. So let me talk to her for a minute. Yeah. And she needs some socialization as well. I just felt like a little bird or something coming into her life and her like coming to life, like, Oh, like this, like if you were thinking to get a parakeet or something like that, I think it's a great idea. I think it would really um, change the way she looks at things for some reason. Like she would almost feel like a, like, like she's able to nurture something and care for something. I think she would love it. Um, okay. So in number two, I'm missing another dog. She is a Chihuahua, all a Chihuahua Terrier mix. Can you sense where she is? <sighs> She's about three blocks away and somebody else took her in. They think they own her now. I don't know how long it's been that she's been gone, but it's kind of like, um, I feel like they're just adults. They don't necessarily have children. They felt like it was almost faded. Um, I did ask, are they going to report it? And I got a yes. It's like their conscience is getting to them. So I don't know where they would report it to, but maybe check with the Humane Society and ask if anybody's reported a, a you know, a dog. Um, but I feel like they want to do the right thing. And they're just kind of like, okay, well, we'll put this out there for like three days. And if somebody doesn't grab her in three days, then she's ours. Maybe they already did that. And maybe they consider her theirs now. Um, will she come back? I don't think so. Um, I don't think, I think, does she enjoy being with these people? Yes, very much. Very, very much so. Um, boy, that'd be a tough one. 
I would say wherever an animal is happiest is where it needs to remain. I think that people need to not insist that it stay, you know, in, in that, in the house that it was in, if it's happier in a new house. And even for that matter, if there's like a couple that's separated, that are watching this, you know, where is the dog truly the happiest? And don't be, don't be selfish. Don't be thinking about yourself and how you're going to miss the dog. Like truly actually think about the dog's needs only. Where is the dog actually the happiest? Where does it wag its tail more or get more exercise or get more food or, you know, where, where is it, where does it seem like the most cheerful and then let the dog be there. Um, uh, yeah. So, but I mean, I guess you can just, you can just say, thank you, God, for showing me that my dog is safe. And if it wants to come home, thank you for helping her come home. You know, just put out, put out that request. Um, thank you, God, because you don't want to pray that she come home. You don't want to affirm that she come home because it may not be her will to come home. So just pray that she's safe. Thank you, God, so much that she's safe and sound and that she's happy. Thank you so much that I found out that she did. And I'm so relieved that she's actually in a really good place and she's being taken care of and she's she's all good. Thank you for affirming that for me. Um, so that way you can have kind of peace with it. You, you know, you'll get that confirmation that you need to know that she's in good hands. Okay. Um, 4097. Hi, Amy. I'm a big fan. Thank you. I would like to know what else I need to do to get my career moving faster. My intent is to raise the world's vibration with laughter. That is awesome. I live, I would love to have you do an inspiring talk. Um, if you, if you want to learn about that, just go to amysatori.com forward slash, I think stories or click on share, share my story on my website. Um, anyway, I have a Western, Nebra I live in Western Nebraska and I'm struggling to get to the next level. I already do one hour shows, but my view is to go big or go home. Well, I hope that's enough info. I'm a 55 year old female comedian. That's awesome. Okay. So um, I feel like you need to do some funny, uh, something like, you know, who JP Spears is or what's his name JP Sears or Spears uh I think you need to get on Instagram and on YouTube and or BitChute but I guess YouTube for now and do some little uh skits I, I also see you like meditating and holding the world in your hands and just laughing by yourself at home cracking up just feeling, feeling, just offering this loving, laughing, lighthearted, fairy type energy toward the world to help heal it. Now, Matt Kahn did this at the beginning of his journey. He wasn't taken seriously and he was not growing. And, um, you know, everybody was just kind of like um, shrugging him off like he was no big deal. Like, what are you talking to me for? You don't know what you're talking about. You know, he wasn't getting any respect. And he started to do that. He started to like picture holding the world in his hands and he would just offer all this love to the world. And all of a sudden he started getting all these clients coming in. So um, I would do that, but do it with your laughter, you know, just offer all this wonderful healing laughter at this world and with the intention of helping heal the world with laughter. And you might start seeing those people start coming in and I just got a yes. So um, give to them, give, give to them selflessly like that, and it'll start paying off. Um, and the YouTube and Instagram will help. Uh, <laughs> I was laughing already seeing you do this funny thing on YouTube. You're just basically, you're um, saying something like, uh, my name is, um, my name is so-and-so, I'm a comedian. And then you just start giggling for no reason at all. And then you start la laughing even more. And then you start really cracking up and, or you could even do it without even introducing yourself and just get on the video and just start giggling and then start laughing and laugh for a good, like five minutes or something. And then at the end, you can say, I hope this, that this was helpful therapy for your evening. I hope this helped, you know, put, put you to bed at a, you know, in a good, in a good uh, frame of mind. Um, 
and, and everybody needs to protect themselves before bedtime right now. This is a reminder for that as well. Um, okay. So yeah, I feel like a lot of people are just going to think it's so funny and they're going to like, you know, share it with everybody. Um, so I think that that, yeah, they just said viral. It could even go viral. Um, but it's even funnier when somebody doesn't give any kind of intro or anything and they're just, they just start laughing, you know, and just like really wholeheartedly from the gut, from the bottom of your core with as much love as you can muster, just crack up. I would watch it. I would love to watch it. That'd be awesome. (laughs) For those of us who like to do laugh therapy, you know, it would be amazing. And, and what I had a little temporary tattoo that said, um, those, uh, those who love to laugh never have bad luck. And it's true. It's true. Um, so those of us who like to laugh before bed or something like that, that'd be the perfect video to get us in the, in a really great mood for going to bed. Um, for that matter, I'm going to do a blissing right now, uh, to protect you guys before bedtime. Make sure to always, you know, put whatever protection you want around you. You could use Archangel Michael, a violet flame. You could do, uh, you know, some kind of a cloaking or protection over your property and your home and everybody in it. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever you pick or choose, or you can listen to um, love tuning forks or uh, some kind of wonderful healing uh, meditation um, or music or something like that. But Make sure that you do that to protect yourself at this time every single night before you go to bed, because we're getting a lot of attacks, psychic attacks in in people's sleep. So I'm going to do a blessing for that right now. Ha shishishi na tutu tsa san se he la ke in da teke na wa wa na tai san se shishi na titi ke es ha pa pa pe pe in ha in shishi na sa se la an da tai ha ha pa ma ha ma an ha na ke in asa sen shi pe pa pa ma ha ma an tai ke he la san se e. Okay. Is there anything else that she can do to, um, to grow her business more quickly? Yeah. Be affirming. Thank you guys so much that my business is flourishing, flourishing through these times. I'm so grateful and so excited. I feel like I've won a million, a million dollars. I feel like I've won the lottery in every area of my life. And that was funny because whenever I slip up, it's not really a slip up. So you're probably going to be making a million, at least a year. They just said, um, maybe more. Um, how much that you might actually start participating in humanitarian projects and stuff, and having people like donate to your cause. Hashishina ataik half laughter. I'm a huge advocate for laughter healing the world. Laughter is one of the best healers and one of the best ways you you can protect yourself. So there is no. I mean, I, you just can't put even a you know a value on you can't put a, a number of value on laughter. I mean, it's the best thing you could possibly, it's the best medicine ever. So um, yeah, if you want to come on my channel and share an inspiring story, I would love to have you. And um, you know, I would definitely refer people to, to go to your YouTube. We would put your link under underneath the video and uh, it might, might be really awesome. So, Okay. Four zero nine eight. Should I look for a new job? I'm not sure. I should stay at the place where I am at, or move to a different location. Okay. Is it time for a change for her? Yeah, you've been feeling it, and they there's they're saying um, when the level of discomfort turns up you know, when the volume gets turned up on your level of discomfort, it's time you're getting squeezed out to a new thing. Um, They're saying that an opportunity is going to meet you at the right time in the right place and in the right way. That's going to be perfect. So I would be affirming that. Thank you, God, for bringing the perfect opportunity to me, to me in just the right time and just the right way. And yeah, that it makes perfect sense for me. And it makes, makes it easy for me to make that decision, to make that move. Um, thank you for showing me and illuminating the steps every step of the way 
and guide me into this new life that I feel is coming. Thank you guys so much for making it as easy as possible, as simple as possible, and uh, making it as clear as possible so that I understand this is the right direction for me to go in. And I feel really confident and excited to go there. Thank you so much for um, for me actually knowing once I get there how incredible uh, of, of, that I know that I made the right decision at my core. It feels so good. Uh, I just feel so much more assured. Uh, in looking back on it, I can see clearly how you were trying to get me to make this change. And now that I'm here and I've, and I've done it, I just feel like I've done the, like one of the best things I've ever done in my life. That this the obviously the best move I've ever made. So I'd be affirming those types of statements. Um, uh, yeah, you're definitely, you're definitely going to be, uh, she's going to be relocating altogether. She's going to be relocating altogether. Not necessarily. I mean, you could, or you could take the travel time to like meditate and things like that. So it could be a job that's like 45 minutes away or something like that. Um, but it's perfect for you. Whatever this is that you're being drawn to is perfect for you. All right. Okay. okay. They want me to pull a couple of uh, spirit cards for you too. What would you advise your best friend to do in your shoes? Do that. There you go. That's always good to ask yourself. You're getting squeezed out of your comfort zone to spread your wings and fly. Throw your inhibitions out the window and go. Wow. Talk about confirmation. You can heal yourself. Your thoughts and words are stronger than you realize and your body is listening. So try it. We are talking to you through what you hear, taste, touch, feel, smell, sounds, colors, and numbers. Pay close attention. So they're trying to get you to look, you know, uh, at different things that remind you of other things that are like synchronicities and signs that you should go that direction. Um, most, if not all of what you're going through involves ascension or leveling up. You'll soon see why you had, why all this had to happen. Uh, so just trust and love yourself no matter what anyone else thinks. Your opinion is the only one that matters. Be true to you and be proud of yourself. Okay. 4101. Amy, my 41-year-old daughter has endometriosis that is very debilitating and painful. She spends a good bit of every month in terrible pain. Unfortunately, being a school teacher, she has had three jabs. Oh, no. She has one son who is now six. Do you see her having another child that she wants so much? Thank you for what you do. I really enjoy your work. So we want to know if she's going to be able to have another child, despite that she's had three jabs. Oh, my heart just hurt so bad. Um. All right, this is bringing up a lot of stuff. Because, okay, I'm going to examine some things that Ishmael, Ishmael Perez said. He's basically saying that there are people who, who have gotten the jab, that if they're really good hearted people who felt like they were forced to do that because of their circumstances, um, that basically if they are 51% or more, um, service to others, <clears throat> just basically if they're kind, compassionate people, um, that they would be kind of, uh, the jabs would be neutralized and, and, uh, yeah, neutralized or detoxed or whatever. When the solar flash happens, it's going to like the effects will be like zapped. So I'm going to ask, is it true that this is going to happen with the solar flash? that there will be like a transformation or neutralization for those of good hearts, compassionate people. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Will there be some good hearted, compassionate people who don't make it through that process? Also? Yes. The what's going to decipher the difference between like who makes it and who doesn't, I guess it's like up to the universe. It's like up to their, to their true heart of hearts 
because maybe they made an excuse for themselves. Like, oh, I had to for my job, but they really didn't. If they like they were, it would have been better for them to choose to do the noble thing and to, um, you know, to do the right thing. But a part of them actually did it because they were afraid, but they wouldn't admit it kind of thing. So it's, I, it's up to it's up to the divine. Um, but if they truly were in a position, I guess, of, you know, and we're not the ones to judge the universe will, but um, as long as she's had the jabs, it's going to, I mean, I've, I've, is it true that people who've had the jab are becoming like sterile and not able to have children? Is this true? Are people who've had the jab less likely to be able to have children? Um, I get a yes and a no, depending. Um, okay. So will she be able to have children? Will she be able to have a, another child? I get a yes, but that it'll be difficult. It'll, it could be, there could be a miscarriage first, something like that. It just barely squeaks in. She's barely able to have it, but I do feel she'll be able to have another kid, but it, it's going to take a lot of faith and it's going to take her thinking really positively. So she needs to start mastering her thoughts now and start to become a, a master of her vibration. So she understands how to, when she's thinking something negative to turn it around and say an affirmation for the positive to, you know, nullify this negative thing. Um, as she does that, her chances increase on being able to have another child. Uh, I felt like picking a card over here. Archangel Uriel, your emotions are healing, which enables you to open to greater love. I will help you release anger and unforgiveness from your heart and mind. So she needs to do some healing before she can invite a child in. So <clears throat> maybe once she's done a certain degree of healing, um, you know, that everything is divinely guided that way. So it feels like if she focuses on her healing um, and her vibration, she'll, she'll definitely be able to have another child. Is it going to be before or after the solar flash? Is it before the solar flash, or after the solar flash? Before the solar flash, after the solar flash. Um, before, after. I feel like it's more leaning toward after the solar flash happens. So is the solar flash going to happen soon? I was going to say soon. Is the solar flash going to happen this year? Please. <laughs> I get a yes. Is it going to happen after this year? Yes. Is it going to happen anywhere between now and 2024? Yes. Is it going to happen in 2023? Yes. Is it going to happen in 2022? Yes. Is it going to happen to different people at different times? Yes. What? And I'm seeing like lightning coming down and striking people. Can they actually see the lightning? No. Wow. It's almost going to be like, this is so crazy. <clears throat> so are you telling me that there are going to be different solar flashes all over the place to different people at different times? Is the solar flash going to be just one grand event or is it going to be a, a lot of little events? Both. Okay. Wow. Wow. So we're not going to be able to see it, but it's going to be like lightning struck. I guess that could be described as enlightenment, really. So once a number of, maybe they're also saying that once a number of people enlighten, then there'll be a massive solar flash to help everybody enlighten. Who's supposed to, at least on that timeline, on the new earth timeline, and not the, you know, not the timeline for, for those who still need to go through a learning, a, a whole learning process. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, so um, going back to your question, yeah, we got to your question, but it just looks like it's going to be after, is it going to be her own individual solar flash? No, it's going to be like the big solar flash. It's almost like like after the solar flash, she, she gets the news that she's pregnant, something like that. It's going to be really neat. Yeah, they said it's, she's going to feel special, however it unfolds. But they're saying emphasize, emphasize, though, she needs to heal and learn to be a master of her vibration. Okay. 4102. Hi, Amy. We spoke last week about my love interest. And after doing well for several weeks, 
I had a moment of weakness and caved in a bad way. I'm so disappointed in myself. I may have messed up um, with an impulsive text. I haven't received a response yet, but my but by the time you were reading this, things may have broken down between us, or it may have initiated a conversation for clarity. I realize I may have sabotaged myself. Where is he at with things with me? And is there anything I can do to make things right between us? Okay, so you need to take a look <laughs> at my love playlist, my all about true love playlist, um, because it talks about these kinds of things that happen in there. So you can never ruin a true love connection. It just cannot happen. It can help you grow. It can help you understand each other more, but there's always going to be drunk texting and there's always going to be like violent reactions, anger, jealousy, all of that stuff happens in these connections because a part of you feels safe to do so. If you know, a lot of these things flare up for healing and it helps you process um, it helps you to just to grow and mature as a result. So now you're regretting it. Now you can have that godly sorrow. Now you can learn from it, be more self-aware and choose a different choice later. This isn't, we're talking, we're not talking about just, just some mimbly wimbly little person that you meet on the street. And oh, I hope it goes well. Oh, looks like it all fell apart. That's just not what we're talking about on this channel. Okay. This is true love. This is somebody that you're meant to be with. This is somebody that you're destined to be with. This is a connection that cannot be broken no matter what you do. So you don't need to even worry about that being any kind of a permanent thing. So um, there is a lot of grace in these relationships, a lot of grace beyond what you could ever possibly imagine. Like you will, everyone gets forgiven in these relationships and in these connections because the love is so damn strong. So it is there to help you learn to love unconditionally. So um, it is not gone. Um, they just said actually opposite. They, they said that he needed to hear whatever it was that you said. So, and a lot of these things, there really are no mistakes. There are, really are no mistakes anyway in life. But um, that in particular need, really needed to be said. And that happens a lot in these connections. Um, so cut yourself some slack, learn to love yourself more, have grace with yourself, a hand on the heart and just say, thank you. I love you. Even though I love you, even though you popped off at him, I love you. Even when you, you do this and when you make this mistake and when you do that, and I love you, even though, or even when get in the habit of doing that and loving yourself, because that's going to help you love him when you guys come together. Okay, so I'm looking at my, these are my Divine Masculine Ghoster cards. They're cards that are designed to tell you what somebody's thinking about you if they're not actually physically with you, a love interest. I mean, people use all my different Oracle cards for different situations. So you can always just randomly choose and not have it have to be about that. I miss you so much, my heartaches. I cry too. I just can't reach out just yet until my situation clears up a bit. Know that I think of you all the time and I want you in my life as soon as possible. See, he's not going anywhere. Wow, I've had enough of this. I want you in my life now. Please just let me do this on my own terms and trust me. I'm coming sooner than you might think. I just can't take this pain anymore. So he knows that there are misunderstandings between you guys and things that need to be cleared up and he wants to set the record straight. I don't care what others think of us. We're perfect for each other. And that's all that matters. True love always has to get, they always has, have to face their egoic issues and destroy them. They're basically both, both counterparts of true love. They are there to just, you know, cut out the ego, cut out the ego, cut out the ego in any way that they possibly can. I'm doing a cleanup job on my life right now in order to make room for you in it. I want to make sure that we don't have any hangups along the way. And I want you to feel as comfortable as possible. Um, I have some overbearing and controlling people in my life. I'm afraid we'll try to control you too. So I'm working on good boundaries and gaining respect before bringing you into this dynamic. Awesome. Don't be surprised if I show up at your door. I'm so sorry. I will make this right by you. And I love you. None of that sounds like he's out of there. Despite how anything appears, I'm faithful to you. You haven't hold my heart. 
<laughs> I hope we're compatible doing certain adult activities because I really need someone open-minded. There are lots of things I'd like to do with you and I just hope you'll be receptive. So he may even was turned on by that. Some things you've said have me reeling. I appreciated it. Even if, even if I acted defensive, I have some reflecting to do, but I'm not going anywhere. I know this will make us stronger. See, true love is like unshakable. The real deal is unshakable. Okay. Uh, okay, so 4103. We have two more after this. Just a heads up for those of you who are in the premiere. And thank you for being here, those who are live in the premiere with me. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so 4103. Hi, Amy and the collective. I hope you're doing so well. I have been dating someone for, with four kids and with mine, it's a total of five kids. It's been super busy, but fun. My daughter's loving it and his kids are great too. Number one, so she has two questions. Number one, my love and I have talked about moving in together a lot lately and it looks like things are going to happen here soon. I was hoping to get a true love uh, relationship spread on that. So I know uh, how he is feeling and possibly what to expect. Okay. And then there, I'm going to go ahead and read number two, but he also just took a job at the, at the rigs in North Dakota. And I know that it's going to be challenging for us and the kids. So I was hoping also to get um, a light lane language blissing, to offer protection, safety, love, and strength for us and the kids. I just worry about him working a lot, traveling, and the separation from me and the kids. Thank you so much. I'm truly grateful for you and all that you have done for me. You have greatly guided me um, on this journey, and I value that so much. Have the best week. Okay, so let's check this out with your person. Hmm. Well, I think it's, it feels like a really beautiful connection. I mean, it feels, it feels healthy. Okay. Is, does he have good intentions in this? I mean, it's kind of like, oh, I've got all these kids and let me, ha let me pass them all off to you. And I go take off for a while, <laughs> but I mean, it's for a worthy cause in the sense that he's trying to, you know, make money for you guys and make things better and more comfortable for you guys, I guess, going out and, you know, making the money he's got to make and do whatever, but it can be really hard being separate from your person. Hopefully he can zoom or something. Yeah. You guys are going to, they're, the universe is encouraging you to go to the next level, make it happen form this commitment, do what you want. There might be people who are kind of against it or kind of naysaying it, ignore those naysayers and just do what you'd like. Yeah. They're saying, do it again. They offer each other your love, your heart, uh, your soul. They just said, even just, I think they're just talking about like being all in. Okay. Yeah. He definitely, um, he definitely loves you. He definitely wants to go forward. He's trying to figure out a way like, yeah, he's trying, he might be again with opposing opinions. He's burdened by opposing opinions and, and, and people pleasing people who say that you guys should either take it slow or maybe this isn't the best idea. It's nobody else's damn business. What you guys decide to do or why you could just decide somebody has purple hair and you love that person for having purple hair and you want to go marry them. And it's nobody's business, you know? Do what you want to do. So it's like he wants to bring this out from being some kind of a hidden secret. Have you guys not announced it to anybody? Yeah, he's he's thinking of slowly but surely going into possibly marriage. Um, he has some regret about maybe the karmic. Um, if, if he was with somebody before that was kind of crappy. Um, if he was in, a, a, if he was married before, he's definitely going to be getting a divorce because he really regrets that. Or it could be, um, he just wants to do right by you when it comes to some kind of a karmic situation that he was in. He's going to lay down the burden and offer you love anyway. So maybe it was just a bad situation that that he now feels like, man, I was I I went in a hut went into hiding because I was people pleasing somehow, and I don't want to hide or keep secrets from her anymore. I want to offer her my heart, and I want to apologize for even any kind of secrets. Um, there could be some secrets that he's going to 
he's that he's going to have to lay down the burden for this new beginning to happen. Like, so you may even mention to him, is there anything before we move in together? Is there anything you want to tell me that I need to know going forward? Cause we have to be on the same side. We have to be on the same team. I need to be aware of any kind of traps I could walk into. Like when you're gone, is your ex-girlfriend going to come over and tell me a bunch of stuff that makes me doubt our connection and freak out. And then I have all your kids here at my house, like, you know, be prepared and try to open up that conversation and give him, give him the ability and the chance or that kind of open the door for him to confess something. Cause it feels like he's got something really weighing on him. Um, and it has to do with people pleasing and hiding something. It could even be that he's not told his parents about you or not told his friends about you, something like that. But um, he's going to do what he wants to do now. He, and he, he's going to, he's going to make the godly choice, not the worldly choice. So in that choice is basically that he's going to figure out a way to have a passionate new start with you and be celebrating and maybe offer some major commitment. Um, he also wants to make sure that you don't go away to somebody else. Maybe he knows about your other person that you like. And so he wants to make sure that you're not going to disappear on him while he's gone on the rigs. So he, he's, um, yeah, he's wanting to beat out his competition and come forward flying at you like that. He feels giddy and excited like a teenager and he wants to just show up like a, like a real man, like somebody that you really respect, not somebody that you would want to judge. So I think he's coming from a good place. Um, he's overcoming his ego and having all kinds of epiphanies and things about whoever he broke up with and he's coming into balance. So um, he's willing to fight for you and go away from those things that used to hold him back and used to be kind of traps keeping him in the, like a 3d mentality and keeping him in his ego. So he looks like in, he's in a really good, healthy place. Um, is this a good idea for her to, yeah. Uh, well, we already said that you got a cards cards at the beginning that said that you should go to the next level and be determined to do so. Even I'm uh, not taking, so I, I feel like some people are trying to stop you guys or will try to stop you guys, but just you, don't let them get to you. Um, how much is he, is he her best option? Yes. Strongest. They said strongest option too. Hapa hey na taike and sense she na pumahana aike. It'll be a challenge, but I also feel like it might be the last time he goes to do the rigs. Like he won't be able to take it. He's not gonna be able to do that to you anymore. It's like to you, meaning like the pain that it's gonna cause for you guys to be away from each other is gonna be like not worth the money. So yeah, I, there's there are other ways to feel happy and fulfilled in a relationship without there being needing to be a bunch of money or anything. And you guys are going to realize that. Yeah. You, you, this is going to be um, shockingly victorious and successful as a result of following your heart and going there. So um, da, da, da. to make your decision, ask yourself, which way brings me closer to my divine purpose and which way takes me away from it? So remember any of you who are trying to make a decision on who to be with, don't do it out of people pleasing, but do it out of like, does this really truly align with, with what I'm here to do on this planet? You know, what am I really about? What do I really stand for? And does this, can this person fuel my fire or are they going to squash it so that I can people please and be with them? You know, am I going to have to um, somehow dampen myself? A happy move to a new home or moving in with someone or place of employment is in the works. The movement will usher in positive new energy. So it's going to be a good thing. Okay. 4109. Could you do a blessing for my mom and I? We've been through a lot since losing my dad, losing dad and my husband. Then mom's sudden leukemia. I'm hoping my new home purchase will uh, find peace for mom and I, and that her self healing soon overrides any more chemo rounds. <clears throat> okay. So you probably know that chemo is really, really deadly, really terrible for you. Oh, very, very toxic. Anything having to do with the medical industry, you guys is very, 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 very toxic. If there's any, any way that you can do um, anything um, organic or holistic as an alternative, it's much more effective and much better for you in everything. So try to look for alternative ways of treating anything that you have going on. Qigong is one of the best ways I know to do it naturally. 
And that's just using your own ability to heal yourself. Okay. Okay, so basically the blessing is to bring to bring the harmony, peace, love, and healing in this new home and detoxifying, purifying. Purging, son. I feel like a gentle, loving energy surrounding the whole situation. Peace, peace of mind. Like I feel like um, like I'm trying to keep out any kind of outside distractions from healing, um, from getting in the way of your guys' healing. Remember, laughter is the best medicine. You guys might start watching that other person's videos every night before bed. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull some spirit cards for you real quick. And then we're going to do our last, our last reading today. Having a good crud and putting your hand on your heart and saying, I love you, can be all that you need. So maybe teach that to your mom and you guys can do that to, to um, you know, together. Affirm through visualization, belief, and saying it out loud that you have all that you need and it will appear in your reality. Doubt is the only thing that can slow its arrival. So keep affirming. Thank you, God, so much that this is such the perfect move for us to have to make for have, for us to have made moving into this new home. I'm so relieved that it's been such a healing environment that we've that we truly are healing our hearts, our emotions, our our feelings, our um, health, our mental health. Everything is healing, and it feels so incredible and soothing. You're in this to inspire and be the example. Give anonymously to those who are in difficult places you've been before. So maybe you're going to be, um, you know, taking as you're moving into this new place, maybe consider giving some of your stuff away that you don't need anymore. Maybe even I like to think of like when you move into a new place together with somebody, it's a really good idea to dump anything that doesn't feel incredible for you. Anything that brings back old memories or reminds you of painful things in the past. Don't even bring it with you. Give it away burn it, you know, do something, destroy that part of, of part of the part of history to, to just stake your claim on happiness, on joy, and just uh, only bring into your new home what truly resonates for you and makes you really, really happy and doesn't bring back any regret or sadness, or I wish I could still be with that person or any of that stuff. Um, so, so nothing that provokes sadness or regret or any of that. Just go into the home with a fresh new energy of new going forward and creative energy. I feel like um, you guys might get into painting too. For some reason, I just saw somebody with a, you know, with a canvas and stuff. You are seeing clearly and are about to make the right decision. So go for it. Pray as if you've already received what you're asking for and it'll be yours. You're only being one, being given one step at a time. Because if you knew all that was coming, it would overwhelm you. Please just trust us to guide you. You don't need all the answers right now. So I feel like this is a message also for a lot of you watching right now. Um, it is a very confusing time, a very frustrating time, because the EBS has not come out quite yet. Um, solar flash has not quite happened, <laughs> uh, unless some of you have probably experienced it or something, because it feels like it's going to be an ongoing kind of individual thing. Um, some, you know, the, the other parts. Um, but anyway, it, it can feel like you're just sitting around waiting. Like, I don't know what to do or where to go or like, like I, like I just feel stuck. If you're in that energy, try to accept it and not resist it as much as possible. Just really settle into just knowing that you are going to be guided every step of the way. And they don't want to overwhelm you with the big picture of telling you the whole thing that's going to happen and all that's going to roll out. So it's like, as you see the signs and synchronicities, and as something is like put before you as an opportunity, 
take that opportunity and then another one and then another one and then another one. So just to keep affirming, thank you, God, for showing me the truth in all things. Thank you for always warning me of any kind of danger. Thank you for always um, uh, showing me all kinds of signs and synchronicities that make it really obvious to me the steps I need to take forward for my best happy and my best timeline and happiness. Um, thank you so much for always bringing me to a better and better situation. Um, and thank you for keeping me on track and helping me to know whatever I need to know, whenever I need to know it. And until that happens, I let it go, you know, and just know, just trust and know that the answers are coming as they should. Um, don't think, don't take things too, too seriously. Just laugh it off. And trust a solution will present itself at the perfect time in the perfect way. Exactly. Okay. One more. <laughs> Thanks for hanging in there, guys. 4110. Hi, Amy. Can I please get any messages or advice from my guides about love? Lots of false starts. And I'm feeling a bit defeated. I know the feeling. <laughs> So definitely look at my look at my videos about all about true love. And I know you probably have looked at a lot of them, but keep in mind that whole thing that I talked about earlier about the twin flames and the soul flames and uh, watch the video alternate options because it kind of explains the whole twin flame passing the torch to the soul flames and all that stuff. <clears throat> and maybe some of the, well, hmm, well, I guess the, the, the truest one for you. I would just be, okay, I would be affirming, thank you, God, so much that the perfect person has come forward for me in the perfect way and at the perfect time. Thank you so much that you've brought somebody who will be faithful and strong and loving and kind and caring and conscientious and who can apologize and who will listen to me with an open heart and an open mind. You know, thank you so much for bringing this incredible person in that, in that I, I know that this is the one for me. I know I want to marry him or her. Um, I know in my heart of hearts with such certainty that this is the perfect person for me. And I'm so completely and utterly grateful to have this beautiful person in my life. I could not be happier having made this choice. Just be affirming that. And don't put any, any of their faces or names to it at all. Just keep affirming what it is you want. Thank you for bringing me into my highest, most joyful timeline possible with the perfect person for me. They don't have to be perfect, but they're like your perfect prince for you. There wouldn't be perfect for somebody else, but definitely absolutely for you. You know, so um no, you definitely have true love coming in. In fact, it feels like even within a month, one of them is going to come forward like brave and valiant. And they're going to, it takes them a while. I'm telling you, it takes them a while. Um, takes them a while to, um, they kind of, they kind of like mature and grow behind the scenes, just like we do. True love is meant to like, you guys both look over at each other and say, oh my gosh, this is the most incredible thing that's ever happened to me. And you, and whether you have many suitors or just one doesn't really matter. Um, but the right one is going to, you know, and they all actually will look at each other and be like, okay, as a result of being inspired by this sweet connection I have with this person, I'm going to grow. I'm going to become more honest. I'm going to be, have more integrity. I'm going to make choices that are more authentic for me. I'm going to bring myself out of fear and align with love more. I'm going to allow myself to cry. I'm going to make better choices for me, for my children, for whatever it is. And you keep doing that and you keep inspiring each other to grow. And whether you, whether or not you end up with, you know, cause you're not going to end up with all of them, obviously, but you're going to end up with one where all of that has come together and um, you've both grown so much and matured so much that you're ready for each other. It doesn't mean that both of you are completely and totally healed. You know, it just means that you're ready to start having some, some good, healthy communication, having, you know, uh, that you both will be agreeing on having good boundaries with people outside your connection, but, and each other. Um, that you're both ready to love yourselves and take space for yourself separately and come together. And it's, it's going to feel healthy to come to go back and forth like this. Um, 
there is, you're going to be willing to apologize. You know, there are some basic things that you guys are kind of going to be ready for by the time you come together. And so just, you know, don't, don't tell yourself a story that I'm unlovable because they haven't come forward. Just remind yourself the true love journey takes time and it takes maturation over a period of time for them to be ready. And you might be surprised that the one that shows up actually isn't the one that you thought was going to show up. So, you know, you definitely have somebody coming in with that a month, within about a month or so that's going to pretty much really surprise you. Um, so just keep, keep from any kind of negative stories. Keep, keep from, you know, do some Byron Katie work on that if you can. Any kind of fear that comes up, that's the job. Okay, if you go, if you go, if you watch the video that's in my True Love playlist, the video called Stepping Into Your Power, Look that video up because that's for the divine feminines. Um, actually, <laughs> I have a new web page. Um, if you go to amysatori.com and click on videos, those are my most frequently referenced videos in there. If you if you watch those, you'll you'll totally understand just about uh, anything. Okay, so but, but I was going to say that there's the video of stepping into your power that's for the divine feminines. Then if you want to understand the masculines, you, you watch the one, the divine masculines ultimate test. You're in this to inspire and be the example. Because you do have people looking at you and how you're handling the situation, you know, your mind may be put at ease if you could just do some more research on this. So watch the videos. <laughs> We wish you could, you could see you like we see you, you're breathtaking from here. So you're actually doing better than you think you are. You have nothing to fear, but those thoughts you're entertaining, start using your mind to create what's possible instead. So just affirming what I just said, just make a wish and we'll conspire to make it come true. Now I like to take something like this and just uh, like, Take these words, write it out on a, or type it out on a piece of paper and, and like tape it on your mirror. Make a wish will conspire to make it come true. I actually have that on my mirror. Miracles are headed your way soon. Now soon, that kind of affirms the month or so. So hang tight, stay positive and keep your thoughts on what you'd like to show up in your world because you'll be crying happy tears. All right. You know, in your gut, this isn't right. What you've been telling yourself about, you know, that it's not going to happen for you. Shortcuts are never a payoff. Don't do any kind of black magic. Not that you were going to do that. You don't have to pay somebody thousands of dollars, some kind of guru, love guru, you know, don't fall into any traps because you get desperate. You know, at the end of the day, make the decision that'll make you smile as you drift off to sleep in a peaceful slumber. Um, Someone needs a bit of tough love if you're to love yourself and live life like you want to. So think about who that could be. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for participating in the premiere. Those of you who do, um, I love you guys and send you a big hug. And I will talk to you next week. If you do have a question for me that you would like answered next week, just go to amysatori.com forward slash ask Amy. And, um, and that's how you do it. <laughs> All right. I talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye. Hey guys, I am so sorry. I totally forgot to do your general blessing. So let's do that. So um, whatever you think about right now, this is going to amplify the energy of your intentions as long as it's for the highest good of everybody involved and um, acknowledges and respects everybody's free will. Okay. So <sighs> Take a deep breath, relax your shoulders. Amanate and Sasashi, La Hake and San Sashi in a pom pom on. La Laki in a shishi in a hae pom pom on. Ha Laki in a tai san Sashi in a oma on. I uh, Ganesha is helping you guys remove all obstacles and whatever it is that you're wanting there. She, 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 na papa, ha, pa, la, na, ha, he, ke, he, la, ha, asan, se, she, en, 
Okay, so I'm going to give you like a couple minutes um, for those of you who are live in the premiere. Thank you for having the sixth sense to stay on just a minute longer, or maybe you heard me say in the chat that there's an, that there's a false ending. <laughs> Either way, you're here. Um, if you guys have had a really cool experience with, um, you know, the, the, this blessing, this general, general blessing that I do at the end of these has benefited you in some way, and you've seen proof and evidence of it, and you know it to be true, and uh, you want to share that story, please do, either in the comments or um, in the chat, in the premier chat. I would love to hear your story of how it helped you with whatever that issue is. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to write that because I know we're at the very end of the premiere and I just want to give you ample time to type it in. Do, 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 do. Have any of you been working with telekinesis? So um, I've been working with it. I used to try to do it as a child, as like a little, little kid. Um, and I gave up on it pretty quick because I just didn't have the stamina or, you know, um, but then all of a sudden it occurred to me, I went to practice again and it occurred to me that I do it all the time and I didn't realize what I was doing. <laughs> so I don't use pendulums because they just tell me what I want and what I want to hear is what I always say to people. Like I don't use pendulums because I can influence them like really easy. That's telekinesis. <laughs> I realized that, oh, I know how it works because I can make, you know, a crystal on a, on a chain move very easily. I mean, I'll, I know what yes and no looks like. So I command the, the crystal to move. I'll be like, yes, no. And it totally swings in the direction I, you know, I want. And then I tested it on um, what do you call dowsing rods? you hold them in your hand and they're in the, there's like a wire that's, that swings loose. You have to just make sure everything's balanced and you're not holding on to anything that could influence the bar at all. And um, when it's pointed straight at you like this, it's neutral and this is open and then this is closed. Like if it crisscrosses. So um, I practiced today in between that last video and this one. And I said, open, 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 open. It swung straight open. And I went close, 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 really close, really close. And it was pretty amazing. And it was fairly, fairly quick. Um, so, and so practice it, just try to, just try to concentrate on you. You have to make the object your a part of you, an extension of you. So you, like, think of the object as your fingers. And you're commanding your fingers to move or to wiggle or to do whatever. I also moved a battery. Um, I looked at the battery and I was like left, left, left. And I pictured and I felt like I was the battery and I felt the weight of the battery. And I was like, okay, now that I know how you feel, I want you to roll this way. And I pictured it and it started to roll. And then all of a sudden, Annie jumped up on the table and I was like, ah. <laughs> so um, yeah, coming into our superpowers, right? So I hope you have have a um, have had plenty of time to write down your comment of how these general blessings have helped you. Um, yeah, because yeah, because I'd like to know. And so have yourself a great weekend, like you were going to with the last ending. <laughs> I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.